Hello there. Today we're having a look at mid-latitude cyclones. Mid-latitude cyclones are storm systems that occur in the mid-latitudes in both the northern and southern hemispheres. And here you can see four of them, two in the north and two in the south, and they're associated with fronts. So where you see these great streaks of cloud, there is a front there. I'm drawing now the mid-latitudes, which is between approximately 60 and 30 degrees north and south. And this, of course, is also the zone of the westerly wind belts that we talked about last year. And the westerly wind belts, of course, blow from west to east. A cyclone is a low pressure. And the word cyclone means it's rotating the same direction as the Earth when viewed from the pole. So if we look down on the South Pole, the Earth is rotating clockwise, so a cyclone in the Southern Hemisphere is going to rotate, um, is going to rotate clockwise. If we look down on the North Pole, the circulation is anti-clockwise, and so the cyclone is going to rotate anti-clockwise. So there in the Northern Hemisphere, anti-clockwise, looking down on the North Pole, and in the southern hemisphere, clockwise, looking down on the south pole. So looking at this one in the southern hemisphere there, it will be rotating clockwise like that. Same direction as the Earth is spinning. Okay, so to remind ourselves, southern hemisphere, the low pressure is going to rotate clockwise, and in the northern hemisphere, the low pressure is going to rotate anti-clockwise. And these are both cyclones because they are low pressures. And it's easy to remember because the sensible southern hemisphere rotates in the direction that you would expect it to rotate. A high pressure is an anticyclone. So in the southern hemisphere, an anticyclone rotates anti-clockwise and in the northern hemisphere it rotates clockwise. So our sensible south names it according to the direction it is turning, anti-clockwise anti-cyclone and clockwise cyclone. The non-sensible northern hemisphere, it does the opposite. Okay, just to recap, all cyclones are low pressures, but not all low pressures are cyclones. If we look here along the equator, we've got the intertropical convergence zone, which, as you should remember from grade 11, is a zone of low pressure that, that moves north and south of the equator with the seasons. So while this is a band of low pressures, the Coriolis effect is not sufficient to cause a cyclonic motion in that area. Whereas in the mid-latitudes, you've got these cyclones developing Right, let's have a look in more detail as to how the cyclones develop. We've got the westerly wind belt blowing, of course, from west to east in both hemispheres. And if we look at the southern hemisphere, the polar easterlies are to the south of the westerly wind belt. And between them, then, where you've got winds blowing in opposite directions, you're going to have a tendency to set up cyclonic motion. This is called vorticity. So imagine taking your hands and rolling a pencil between them. It's the same effect, that the pencil will turn, the air will turn between winds blowing in opposite directions. And this vorticity can trigger the development of low pressures or cyclones, blowing in this case in a clockwise direction. And this, of course, is the beginnings of a cyclone or low pressure. Right, now there's a further detail that we need to add here. Between the westerly wind belts and the easterly wind belts is a front that's a boundary between air masses, between the tropical, warm tropical air and the cold polar air. So you've got temperature difference as well as wind direction across the polar front, the red line. 
so we need to take a look at this in more detail. The position of the polar front is largely determined by what's going on in the upper air. There are very, very powerful west to east winds in the upper air called the jet stream. Now these winds meander and they affect what's happening on the surface and where they bend they can cause the polar front at the surface to bend and the net result is that when the polar front bends southwards as in this diagram then a low pressure develops. Now if you look at the diagram you can see then that on the left or to the west of the low over there the cold air is moving west to east pushing forward and that creates a cold front and then to the east of the low pressure the warm air is pushing forward and that creates a warm front now people often make the mistake and think that this is turning like a propeller it isn't it's like a wave on the sea so that the cold front more or less stays in that position and the warm front more or less stays in that position as the front as the system moves along the polar front and remember cold air to the south warm air to the north now this difference in temperature is going to determine what happens on those fronts right let's just color in that low so it's clearer okay so what is happening on each of these fronts You've got the cold air at the cold front pushing underneath the warm air. And at the warm front, you've got the warm air riding over the cold air. The cold air, of course, is going towards the east, so it's not pushing underneath as it is in the cold front. Looking in more detail at what happens on each of the fronts, the cold front we mark with the blue pointy arrows. And that, of course, extends out from the low pressure at the center of the mid-latitude cyclone. And the warm front um, we're going to mark with red to indicate the warm and it has round symbols on it to indicate that it's less aggressive than the cold front. Then looking at the pressure pattern ahead of the cold front the isobars tend to be fairly parallel running northwest to southeast like that which means there's a northwesterly wind and then south of the polar front they are more tightly circular and we'll have a look at some synoptic charts just now to see exactly how these work right so that's the basic pattern so ahead of the cold front you've got a northwesterly wind and behind the cold front you've got a southwesterly wind in this area south of the warm front the wind is blowing around the clockwise around the low pressure now remember this is a moving system so it's perhaps not quite as simple as it appears here it's like a wave motion on the surface of the sea and behind the cold front then we've got cold air pushing into the warm air now cold air of course is heavier than warm air so it's going to lift it up and it's going to cause some weather which we will look at in a moment. Right so let's draw a section across the cold front call our section AB. Okay so we've got the westerly wind the cold air coming in creating the cold front which remember we mark with arrows and that is pushing underneath the warm tropical air which it's going to lift up now where you've got air rising of course you are going to get clouds forming the front is moving forward fairly aggressively which means the uplift is going to be rapid and you're not just going to get any clouds you're going to get cumulus clouds forming with rain so your cold air pushing underneath the warm air is going to lift that up and we will get cumulus note the cumulus clouds are forming ahead of the front and produce rain just ahead of the front and then behind the front those clouds will dissipate let's look at what's happening on the warm front if we draw section cd 
then we complete the section across the mid-latitude cyclone. The warm front doesn't slope as steeply as the cold front. In fact, it has a slope in reality, or this is greatly exaggerated. The warm front has a slope of about one degree, and the cold front a slope of about two degrees. But over hundreds of kilometers, of course, that creates a considerable height difference. Now the warm air is not being pushed upwards as vigorously, it's drifting over the cold air, so you don't get massive cumulus clouds developing, you tend to get more stratiform clouds, so nimbostratus, um, altostratus and so on. But again of course where there is cloud and uplift there is the possibility of rain, although on the warm front this would tend to be drizzle rather than heavier downpours area between the two fronts is called the warm sector because of course it is the warm air, the warm tropical air and then underneath those two fronts the air is cold although the air ahead of the warm front is not as cold as the air behind the cold front so it may for example and note this is just for example be 15 degrees ahead of the warm front then 20 degrees in the warm sector and then quite a bit colder in the cold sector behind the cold front. This is because the cold air behind the cold front is coming from much further south than the cold air ahead of the warm front. Right, that concludes the general description of what a southern hemisphere mid-latitude cyclone looks like. Now of course we need to have a look at it on synoptic charts and get a clearer understanding of the precise weather conditions that are associated with it. Interpretation of mid-latitude cyclones on synoptic charts is in the next video, Mid-Latitudes 2.